Python Data Classes Data classes were introduced with Python 3.7 and they're a class which typically contain mainly data, although there aren't really any restrictions. They provide a convenient way to define classes which exist primarily to store data and allow value retrieval via attribute lookup. In this video course, you'll learn exactly which conveniences data classes provide. In addition to nice representations and comparisons, you'll see how to add default values to data class fields, how data classes allow for ordering of objects, how to represent immutable data, and how data classes handle inheritance. So, with no further ado, let's take a look at a comparison between using a data class and a standard class for storing data. Comparison to standard classes. The code in this course was run using Python 3.9, but any version from 3.7 onwards should run it. The code is seen running with the bPython REPL, which offers an enhanced way to work directly with Python code, offering color coding and command completion. Data classes are created using the data class decorator, as seen on screen. A data class comes with basic functionality already implemented. For instance, you can instantiate, print, and compare data class instances straight out of the box. Compare that to a regular class. A minimal regular class would look something like this. While this isn't much more code to write, you can already see signs of the boilerplate pane. Rank and suit are both repeated three times simply to initialize an object. Furthermore, if you try to use this plane class, you'll notice that the representation of objects is not very descriptive, and for some reason, a queen of hearts is not the same as a queen of hearts. Looking at this behaviour, it seems as if data classes are helping us out behind the scenes. By default, data classes implement a wrapper method to provide a nice string representation and an EQ method that can do basic object comparisons. For the regular card class to imitate the data class version, you need to add these methods as well. As you can see, this means extra work needs to be done to allow regular classes to give you what data classes do by default. In the next section, you'll take a look at other alternatives, some of which you may have already encountered. Alternatives to data classes For simple data structures, you've probably already used a tuple or a dictionary. You could represent the Queen of Hearts card in either of the following ways.
This does work, but it puts a lot of responsibility on you as a programmer. You need to remember that the Queen of Hearts variable represents a card. For the tuple version, you need to remember the order of attributes. Writing spades A will mess up your program, but probably not give you an easily understandable error message. If you use the dict version, you must make sure the names of the attributes are consistent. The example shown on screen would not work as expected. Furthermore, using these structures is not ideal. The tuple does not give us named access, and the dict version doesn't give named attribute lookup. A better alternative is the named tuple. It's long been used to create readable small data structures, and you can in fact recreate the data class example already seen using a named tuple as seen on screen. This definition of named tuple card will give the same output as the data class card seen earlier on did. So why even bother with data classes? First of all, data classes come with many more features than you've seen already. At the same time, the name tuple has some other features that are not necessarily desirable. By design, a name tuple is a regular tuple, which can be illustrated by this comparison seen on screen. While this might seem like a good thing, this lack of awareness about its own type can lead to subtle and hard to find bugs, especially since it will happily compare two different name tuple classes. Name tuples also come with some restrictions. For instance, it's hard to add default values to some of the fields in a name tuple. A name tuple is also by nature immutable, i.e. the value of a name tuple can never change. In some applications, this is an awesome feature, but in other settings, it would be nice to have more flexibility. Data classes will not replace all uses of named tuple. For instance, if you need your data structure to behave like a tuple, then a named tuple is a great alternative. Another alternative, and one of the inspirations for data classes, is the Atters project. With Atters installed, as seen here, you can write a card class as follows. This can be used in exactly the same way as data class card and name tuple card examples seen earlier on. The Atters project does support some features that data classes do not, including converters and validators. Furthermore, Atters has been around for a while and is supported in older versions of Python.
but Atas isn't part of the standard library, and as such, it would add an external dependency to your projects. If you use data classes, similar functionality will be available everywhere without external dependencies. In addition to Tuple, Dict, NameTuple and Atas, there are other similar projects including Typing, NameTuple, Atadict, Plumber and Fields. While data classes are a great feature, there are still use cases where one of the older variants fits better. For instance, if you need compatibility with a specific API expecting tuples or need functionality not supported in data classes. Now that you've seen what the alternatives may be, in the next chapter, you'll get back to implementing data classes, starting with a simple example. Basic data classes. Let's get back to data classes. As an example, you'll see a position class that will represent geographic positions with a name as well as the latitude and longitude. What makes this a data class is the data class decorator just above the class definition. Beneath the class position line, you simply list the fields you want in your data class. The colon notation used for the fields is a feature that was introduced in Python 3.6 called variable annotations. You'll soon see more about this notation and why we specify data types like string and float. Those few lines of code are all you need. The new class is ready for use. You can also create data classes in a similar way to name tuples. The following is almost equivalent to the definition of position you've just seen. A data class is a regular Python class. The only thing that sets it apart is it has basic data model methods such as init, repr and eq implemented for you. It's easy to add default values to the fields of your data class. This works exactly as if you'd specified the default values in the definition of the init method of a regular class. Later in the course, you'll learn about default factory, which gives a way to provide more complicated default values. So far, we've not made a big fuss of the fact that data classes support typing out of the box. You've probably noticed that we defined the fields with a type hint. Name string says that the name should be a text string. In fact, adding some kind of type hint is mandatory when defining the fields in your data class. Without a type hint, the field will not be part of the data class. However, if you don't want to add explicit types to your data class, Use any from the typing module. While you need to add type hints in some form when using data classes, these types are not enforced at runtime. The following code runs without any problems. This is how typing in Python usually works. 
Python is and will always be a dynamically typed language. To actually catch type errors, type checkers like MyPy can be run on your source code. You already know that a data class is just a regular class. This means you can freely add any method you want to that class. As an example, let us calculate the distance between one position and another along the Earth's surface. One way to do this is by using the have assign formula, which is seen on screen. You can add a distance to method to your data class, just like you can with normal classes. And here you'll see the distance method being added to the position data class. Now that you've seen the basics of data classes, in the next section, you'll see how to make them more flexible.